Hello. Hiya. Hello, James. How are you? I'm good, Alistair. How are you? I'm all right. This is a bit weird, isn't it? In my fake it library, is. in your actual shed. I like what you've done, though, because we've it's sort of lined up. So it almost looks like your library segues into my shed, like yeah, a, one of like those a... sitcom episodes where they divide the living room in half. <laughs> and I filled mine with books, and you filled yours with bo- boxes and a, a fan, I can see there, and some yeah, WD-40. Some, some old tiles. Oh, uh, nice. There's a PlayStation 1 and a PlayStation 2 around here somewhere. There's a PlayStation 1 behind this green screen, uh, let me tell you. And, uh, it is very dusty. Uh, along with a nice. copy of, is it the original Silent Hill? I don't know, but I'm in front of you, so I can I can at any point oh. f- pull focus. That's the magic of the green screen. Ah, oh, yeah. I'd Windows strong. Sabara always thought you were joking about recording in a shed. No, it's a real shed. No, it's a <laughs> real shed. They thought with you were such a, real... a boastful man that you with a real that's zombie a lie. baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I realised the other night I was sitting out when it was nice weather and I heard something trudging through the undergrowth on the other side of the wall near where the little gravestone is. Listeners to the podcast will know that that is one of the most frightening places near where you live and it it is known to be spooky. It's about two metres that way. (laughs) The the magic of live streaming is that you can literally point in the direction of the thing you're talking about. Yes. Through I, a wall. This is the future. Yeah. This really is the future. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sh- Wilson Deluxe has, has brought up the movies with absolutely no movie warning. I think there are people from Chippy or listening to this live, mm. so please don't. Please. The last thing we want is a movie incident coming down not just on us, but on everybody in the chat stream. Yeah. Which may be on that side, or it may be on that side. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. No, I can't. No, it's nope. there. That was you. I don't know where it is. What? It's there. It's, it's there. It's in there. It's, it's in there. It's there. There's the old chat stream. Right. Thank thank you. Wilson says uh, they will be more careful. Thanks, Wilson. Thank you. I like, I also, I'm glad we got the Wilson Deluxe rather than the basic model. Yes. Because it, it is better. You you do appreciate the... I I don't want to be a naysayer, but I'm not sure there's that much of a difference apart from in price. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, I, I've got some music lined up. Would you like to hear the music oh, yeah, to our yeah. podcast? Should we, should we, should we play, the, play our music? I don't think you'll yeah. be able to hear it, James, but I will. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll introduce the podcast. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if this works. Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm Alistair Beckett King. And I'm James Shakeshaft. And live streaming this really draws attention to how rarely we manage to get this done right in a single take, James, because we never manage to say that correctly. I think that's one of our better ones. Yes. At least I didn't sound really bitter, as I always do. And I'm James Shakeshaft, is how I normally I'm James Shakeshaft. Up, but... Ah, and them jumps shake shaft. I think and cha, cha, cha. there's a lot of pressure on you to, when you come in second with the, with the shake shaft name. Oh, they, yes. oh, my mouse was wobbling all over your face there, James. That was so disrespectful. Oh, yeah, like a child with a laser pointer at the cinema. Sorry, Get off. sorry, sorry, Joe. Oh, no, oh, we've got, we got mouse pointers in here. Oh, whoa. whoa. Yeah. Um, hello, the people. How are you, the people? It's very nice to have you here. It's I, I think we should refer to them as in a, this being a folklore podcast. We should they're folk, really. That is that, the, that, the yeah. law folk. Welcome. Hiya, folks. That works. Yeah, actually. and also it and makes you should... sound like a cool a cool vicar. Yes, like a like a drama teacher. Hi, time. folks. A drama teacher that that moonlights as a vicar, possibly. Yeah. Hey, he maybe we should do some character? improvised scenes. Around New Testament stories, <laughs> maybe we could do that. You know, it's like how do you turn a pulpit round and sit on it backwards, though? <laughs> Get over your side. <laughs> um, yeah, we've 
we've got some, I've recognising names of people that have emailed us. We've got a man from Chester the Street. I saw Chester the Street in the chat. Um, yes. Oh, AKA Chester the Street, uh, AKA Chester Lee Street. Uh, Chester one of the Lee one Street. of the finest streets in the northeast of England. You should you should see that. Has it, has it got an Argos? You bet it has. Yeah, everything. Have you ever been to the the town of Chester? Yes, I've also been to Chester. Um, it's, Is it like the street but bigger? I have to say Chester's nicer. I'm really sorry to Chester the streets, but um, Chester the Chester is Chester Chester. <laughs> it's just better. It's like it it's a... like Wilson Deluxe, as Wilson Deluxe is to Wilson. <laughs> so Chester the Chester is. To, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. One's better, definitely. Chester's definitely got an Argos. Um, I'd say. Not just a street. Uh, someone is is correcting me and saying that there's more to Chester the Street. There's a cafe. Um, there's a smuggler's alley. I think my parents met in the city of Chester, so I I owe Chester quite a lot. But Chesterley Street. Has Chester got a shop called Amy's Wine House? Now that that is an oh that is a name. I, I, I've got to put that with the Jimmel Mixit Concrete Mixing Company in terms of <laughs> business names Ooh. that you later come to regret. Oh yeah, wowzers! Where has got a shop called Amy's Wine House? Presumably that's a Chest, Chester Le Street establishment. Oh, but I don't remember Amy's Wine House. Oh, good. And then you could have like Amy's <laughs> Swine House for pigs. Why? Why stop at yeah. one pun? Why, why not? stop there? Why stop yeah. there? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. I mean, I've. I'm surprised. But I've drawn a blank on punning shop names because I usually. <laughs> You're normally the pun I've master. I've got about I'm, twenty. I know. I'm. I'm <laughs> usually a mere pun padawan, which is watching. Watching you go. <laughs> uh, pad pun. No. Pantuan. No, no, no wow. I'm not standing for that. <laughs> it seems live stream drains my power. <laughs> I know the first rule of improv is to yes and everything, but I absolutely veto pad pun as a, a viable Padua Star Wars pun. Pad pun, no. I think I vetoed it halfway through before <laughs> I even got to the pun <laughs> section. Yeah, your vocal cords vetoed it as you were saying it. Um, uh, but Sorry, uh, Amy's Winehouse street... doesn't sell wine? What? What? Is that is that what the chat's saying? That's outrageous. It doesn't. Is it just because it just sells like diamond white or something or ace eight ace? Yeah, I suppose. It, I don't think we can resolve this. Uh, this is this is interesting because well, it's very like usually doing the doing the podcast except being heckled with town facts yeah, by people in I, very small font, a very very small font. Yes. Well, hello from Chester the Street. Are you, are you in Chester the Street right now? Are you live there? I think there's a bit of lag on the stream chat, so we, I don't think we can ask questions to the chat and expect an answer uh, in a timely manner. Yes, that's uh, true. So uh, uh, do do fill us in on if, if anybody is uh, talking to us from Chester the Street, please let us know. We w we would like yeah. to hear that. Definitely. I, I'd like, as I've said, I'm in the shed today and in order to get the Wi-Fi from my house to the shed, I've got all the doors open and I've already heard someone moving their bins around. <laughs> so I apologise if there's a lot of background noise. <laughs> Alistair, it's not even bin night, mate. What? I know. During lockdown, not, not to get too incisive and topical but during lockdown <laughs> I, I don't even know when bin day is the streets are lined with bins day in day out <laughs> I, 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 it feels like we're in one long groundhog bin day it's, a, it's appalling <laughs> but uh, Stepocador, which I assume is how that's pronounced like it's a Spanish yep. job uh, is mm -hmm. from is live from, from the street as, as they quite arrogantly put it oh, oh there's a few people oh, in Geordie Laura's from near Chester Street too Wow, some there's a lot of people in the re, in the region of Chester the Street. Yeah. Oh, I feel that bad that, that we're not doing. That explains the unusual stats we get on the podcast, where like half the listeners are from America and the other half of them are specifically from Chester the Street. Now it makes sense. <laughs> oh, I feel bad we're not doing a northeastern tale today. Shall I? Shall I? Shall I Just unveil lie. the tale? Just lie. Just lie, lie. lie. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you, unless you want to do more emails or correspondences, we could. Ooh. I well, I don't think we're ever going to put to bed the lore, lore men, lore, lore men, lore men, 
Loreman, Lawman. No. No, it can't Lorayman. be resolved. Lorayman, it turns out, is how you say it in America. That's how Mrs. Siri and um, the Google lady say it. Oh, yeah? Lorayman. That's how you have to get Lorayman. it. Lorayman. That's mm. how you get it to play on your smart speaker. Yeah, that's that's this brilliant marketing behind the podcast that you have to mm. mispronounce it to get it to work. Using a made-up word. Oh, and latest from Candy... Um, Candy latest from Candy. Oh yeah, the um, the the person who was very kindly trying to tell other people about our podcast. Uh, she's she's looked up what Turkish delight is and is appalled. <laughs> yeah, and rightly so. I'm glad I'm glad to have Candy on my side on that one because I do I do not care for the for the Turkish delight. More like Turkish seeming like it's going to be good, but actually is weird. Turkish disappointment. That would have been, yeah, that's better. You're back on form, that's, James. It's quicker. It's quicker. Mm. You bought me some time with an overly long yeah. laboured bun. Yeah. Fortunately. But no, today we're talking about something from my region. We're going to be talking about the Rollwright Stones. Nice name. I it's got, a great name. Got a little picture of them here, some of them. Oh, that's quite, a, yeah, that is, that's the, the main circle, the King's Men. Uh, I have to correct you there, James. Those are not men; those are stones. No, that's that's their name, the King's Men. There's oh. three separate little bits that make up the Rollwright Stones air arena. Um, you've got the the main circle, uh, which is an a pro- about just under a hundred stones in a circle, about the same size as um, Stonehenge. Really, and then about a quarter qu- about a quarter mile. But east of that is uh, four stones called the Whispering Knights. That is a good name. Mm. And then just across the road in the other direction is a single standing stone called the King Stone. And around there, there's also various other things like um, Long Barrows and old like Iron Age Farm and a Saxon burial ground over there. It's all there. So do you think... Do you th- I just realised my collar was underneath my waistcoat this whole time. Distra- oh. Annoying, isn't it? We'll start it. Start again. Start the podcast the again. Everybody log off. There was a, co- a, a, a collar error. Uh, apologies there. Um, no, do you think that the they planned to have three different stones around the place, or do you reckon they planned to have them all in one place and lost commitment to the bit <laughs> after? Because after you've done a hundred stones, you're like. Maybe this, maybe these ones are just here. These can be oh, just some nice. Just leave these. And that one over there can just be because it's big. Can just be on its own. Is it your thing? Make a thing of it. We'll, we'll give them all different yeah. names so it's like a thing. Yeah, that's the plan. So these were well, always meant to be here where they currently are. Well, they've actually dated them, um, by which I mean, presumably carbon dated, rather than you know, yeah, taking them for a drink, taking them down to the bistro to amy's wine house or <laughs> it's not because it'd be chippy it would be you would probably take someone to taste of the country or annie's country pantry if you were doing it in the 80s um, annie's country pantry yeah that was the it place sounds like to something go. that if you say it too many times fast becomes rude it it's, it's risky it's yeah it's got some spice to it which is ironic because it's so, so served the blandest food um <laughs> But they are actually from different times. The Whispering Knights are the oldest. They're reckoned to be bet- from be- they're, they're reckoned to be from between three thousand eight hundred and three thousand five hundred BC. Three thousand BC. I sorry, three thousand eight hundred BC. So nearly, I wasn't appreciating how old they were. That is, according to the Hebrew calendar, that's from before Adam and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> the so, Hebrew calendar starts in 3760 BC, or they probably don't call it BC, though, I imagine. Um, and that's the year before Adam and Eve. Wow. So the year before Adam and Eve, they were built, they were setting stones up in Chipping North. They were, they were already, th- they were potentially already 200 years there. Wow. That is old. Yeah. 
that is old older than time um the main circle is from about 2500 bc which yeah. is that well the pyramid of giza was finished in uh 2560 bc all right now you impressed me with the last one but let's let's not try and put it up against the the pyramid the pyramids of giza james i mean look i'm going to bring the picture back up Here's a, this is a, a mid seventeenth century drawing of it. They're good. That's slightly nearer. They're the good. Time. They're yeah. not. They're not the pyramids. They. I think that they haven't even yeah. thought of putting one stone on top of another stone. They just. It was a thick. It was. It was either they couldn't be bothered or they made a design choice. Oh, it was a design choice to just yeah. leave them sticking in the ground, and yes, not that... all in the same place. Yes. Oh, like, right. Like how I put my dirty socks on the floor rather than in the wash bin it's a, it's a design choice okay all right um that's older too by the way 2500 bc that's older than beekeeping <laughs> <laughs> that's older than the domestication of the bee is that what yeah because up until that that's point they were they were what rogue they were the equivalent of as, as wolves are to dogs so old yeah. bees were to current bees. Nine yes. times the size. They chase you down, spray honey in your eyes. They howled. <laughs> People lived they in fear of the... <laughs> and you get wear bees. <laughs> you were stung by a bee. Whenever you tasted honey, I don't know. Of course, that's, that's Geordie for our bees. <laughs> doesn't really work doesn't really work there's too many Geordies in the chat I'm not going to get away with that oh they're going to oof um, it's older 2500 BC is older than Sargon of Arkad who oh. is a historical person not a Star Wars character yes uh, but also unfortunately the name of a, a right wing YouTuber I presume you oh, don't it? know yeah it, it, it is probably cut that out of the podcast Oh, that's disgusting. He stood I'm as a glad. UKIP candidate. Anyway, it's not important. And he was called Sargon of No, 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 it's not. No, his, name, his, real, name, his real name's Carl. Uh, he, but his, YouTube, <laughs> his YouTube name was Sargon of Akkad. Really? Yeah, yeah, he chose it. Oh, I, I don't know why. It's Well, because it, that was the earliest El empire builder in recorded history. Oh, oh fair enough. Well, that, it, that sounds fairly conservative, I suppose. They tend to like empires, don't they? Oh, that's that makes sense. really... You keep folk live empires. I'm sorry, the stream for that. That's disgusting. Sorry, the stream. Sorry, Chestler Street. Some people have pointed yeah. out that the stones are quite a lot bigger than the horses in this picture, and that maybe that's because horses were smaller in them days. <laughs> well, you, yeah, what you don't realise is that's a child sitting on a dog in the foreground. Yeah. <laughs> that and what looks like a windmill, but built on a on a ladder in the corner. Oh, well. I think there was a windmill down there because it's quite on the top of a hill, and there's a you can see down into Warwickshire on oh, one nice. side and over into Chip and Norton on the other side. That will become important later on. Oh, um, I like it when you sow intrigue. Mm, thanks, mate. Um, the Kingstone is the youngest. He's from 1500 ish BC, which is the time of Tutankhamun or Tutankhamun. I'd I'm not going to either refine. I'm not going to correct you. I, I I don't speak ancient Coptic or or whatever language that is. There's no horrible YouTubers with that name. I have. <clears throat> it probably is. It probably is. It's the internet, mate. Yeah. It's the internet. So yes, the Royal White Stones, the legend. That is the boring bit about how old they actually are. Tried to spice it up with bees. Yeah, I, I really I appreciated the bees. Thank most you. Most things in my life. Um, but the story, the story that's told for how these stones came there, came to be there, is I'm going to get my special book, one of my favourites, Folklore of the Cotswolds by Catherine M. Briggs. Nice. And people, we've been describing these these book covers because every one of them has a beautifully seventies design, yeah. and and it, it just it just doesn't come out in audio. Look at that. Look at the font. Look at the look at that little guy's face. Look at his face. Oh, beautiful. I'll find, they they also have um, excellent pictures on the um, on the chapter pages because that does that come out 
Oh yeah, I can see. Oh, that's, that's a, um, a a cow trampling over a beheaded man's face. Oh, with a dove. Wait a minute, I know what I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, you know the what dove. you're looking at there. Ken Elm looks like a really hunky nineteen-year-old, which is not what I was visualising. That's that's Saint yeah. Ken Elm having a dove emerging, that is like, like a snitch dove emerging to go and tell the Pope he's been murdered. Exactly, and that it's. I don't know what the dog. I don't know why the dog's there. I don't think the dog. I don't recall the dog being in the Saint Ken Elm legend. The Midnight but, Library is complaining about the fact that I'm drinking two different drinks at once. I'm drinking tea and water. I, I can do what I you, want. I, I won't be told. Wowzers. Um, so, what the story is, is way back when... Oh, mixing it up. I've, I, I've I, got, I shouldn't have done that. I didn't even want to. I just did it to be provocative. I've got a cup, but it's now empty. So uh-huh. I'm going to mime, mime it. Yeah, mime it. Oh, nice. Your acting training really paid off there, James. That was my mime school mm. right there. Mm. That was worth uh, four years in France and a few grand. Mm. Uh, it was three months in um, Shepherd's Bush <laughs> and it was <laughs> a couple hundred quid. But it was a guy who taught the wheelers from Return to Oz. Oh, the known king yes. doesn't allow chickens anywhere in Oz. My exactly of the that. wheelers. That's a very good impression. Thank you. I can do um, an entire film if you would like. It's a very frightening film. That. It is. A big, huge, huge fan of uh, Walter Murch's work in general, but also that film. Uh, oh. Furious Randy asks if it's a hot Pepsi. I believe that's uh, a reference to Bill Alzafar's stream. And yes. we will not be doing cross-references to other more successful and popular streamers. Or not. And, unless he will then cross-reference us. Oh, yeah, in which case, I mean, I've always thought Bill Al was a great guy. Um, I had a lovely, a lovely chat with him over breakfast in Leicester earlier this year. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. That sounds Leicester nice, fringe. pardon the pun. I don't get the pun. It's um, it's one of the things he says. Oh. Anyway, oh, I, let's get to the legend. So, back back in the past, there was a um, an army with a leader, a king, who in some reports is a giant, and he wanted to take over the whole of England. And he got to around the area of Little Rollwright. And he was going over a hill. And then a witch came in front of him. And she said, Seven long strides thou shalt take. And if Long Compton thou canst see, King of England thou shalt be. And he was like, brilliant. And he, in every single report, it says that he shouted this. He <laughs> shouted, stick, stock, stone, as king of England, I shall be known. And he took seven long strides. And as he took a seven stride, a hill rose up out of the ground and blocked his view of Long Compton. That's really, that's like, that's, that's like Macbeth, but with special effects. That's really good. Yeah. And and then the witch said, As long, Compton, thou canst not see, King of England thou shalt not be. Rise up, stick, and stand still, stone, for King of England thou shalt be none. Thou, yeah. thou and thy men, whore stones shall be, and I myself an elden tree. Oh, nice. And so, yeah, and so they, the king turned into stone, his circle of men just behind him turned into stone and then a quarter of a mile down the way some knights who were whispering and conspiring against oh, the I king see. I see what's happening, were yeah. also turned into stone and oh. that's the story and then she turns into a um, an elder tree so, so he turns into stone but also his enemies turned into stone very much a sort of rising tide kind of affected them all even people who he, did, he wouldn't have liked also got turned to stone well, he liked them at the time. He didn't know that they were conspiring against him. Oh, okay. So they were just... at that point still part of the king's... They still fell under the remit of invading army. Oh, right. Fair enough. Mm. I mean, how did anybody find out that they were conspiring if they turned to stone, if everybody there turned to stone and, it, and the only person who didn't turn to stone became a tree? Well, because they don't actually always remain stone. But you've things... genuinely surprised me there. I, Four I didn't things see that coming. That turn 
into stone as some sort of curse, they seem to get quite a lot of time off. Apparently, the Whispering Knights go down to Little Rollwright's Spinney either on holy days or every single night at midnight to drink from the river, oh. the Spinney. And what is this? What is this? The spinney is a river. Spinney is a word for like stream ah, right. type thing. Right. Um, and at midnight every day, the king's men dance in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, what happened once? A load of people surrounded the king's stone. And someone went over to the tree that was the witch, the elder tree, and cut it with a knife, and it bled blood. Ooh. And oh, I like a good tree that bleeds blood. And the king's headstone moved. And so just say, whoa, what Wait. are you doing? What's, What's happening? That? What's that? That's just the bins. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. That is good. And... Um, more stuff. The Whispering Knights, apparently, um, they will tell you the future if you listen very carefully. Women yeah. would go and listen to them and they'd whisper the name of their future husbands. Oh. And um, they'd be like, the Brexit referendum will be a leave. Yes. Put some money on it. But then it turns out it's just a UKIPper standing behind the yeah. stone. Because it is Chipping Norton, let's be, let's be realistic. Oh, it's not. It's not a very remain shield. area. It was because it was Cameron's. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yes. Place, so. out, of, out of loyalty to uh, to the great man. Fair enough. Who, by the way, does a lot of people say when I say Chipping Norton, they say David Cameron lives in Chipping Norton. He does not live in Chipping Norton. I want to put this to bed now. He lives in Dean, <laughs> which is where the tip is. Dean Tip, which mysteriously shut down, just. After he became prime minister, coincidence? You you didn't tell me in advance you were going to be push, pushing your conspiracy theory agenda, James. But upside is the tip now that people have to go to is a it's a pit and it's run by the Dix family, D I X, and it's called Dix Pit. <laughs> so the tip is a pit, which mm. that's which is like. Uh, and it's run by the family Spoonerism. of Dick, the family Dicks. Run by the family Dicks. Mm. Which is an awful version of the family Ness. <laughs> the horrible, the horrible kids version. show. <laughs> the family Those Dicks. are bagpipes, mate. <laughs> uh, you, you, you want a thistle whistle. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just, I'm guessing that's to call attention and hopefully get rescued. Yes, yeah, um, a, a load of local Bobby. So uh, the Kingstone. Leave Sorry, her out of one, one podcast. We normally we have to we get to cut this. <laughs> um, the Kingstone <laughs> is the Kingstone is meant to be lucky. Um, if you take a little chip of it, it's seen as good luck, and it or it's a fertility charm. And nice fairy, fairies dance around it, Fine. just on yeah. on the regs. Um, the Whispering Knights. Uh, a farmer once wanted to make a bridge over that spinney and he he so he decided to take one of the stones from the whispering knights oh they're not going to like that Ooh, well he they are going to be based on what i know about them they're going to be really cuttingly sarcastic about that in a sort of low key kind of way but they're going to be definitely like definitely oh, out yeah. of earshot brilliant oh yeah try and make a bridge out of me fantastic see what that, that farmer's doing now and so it took him, apparently it took four horses to drag this stone down the hill to the spinney and two people died. What? I don't know how. Just says two people died during it. That's incredible. I mean, that's like, how many? That's like, it's not the Channel Tunnel. I d how many people died trying to cross this stream? <laughs> You're, yeah, you've got to add it up, haven't you? Because if, mm. if, if one person dies every 10 years, how long is the bridge going to last? I just don't think it adds up. I think that's a terrible... And, Two people died moving one stone. I think how many people died setting up the King's Men in the first place. There's a hundred well, of them there. If it's two people per stone, that's 200 people died. I'm going to say a little bit more intrigue. We'll get to that. Oh. Um, so they dragged the... Um, so, yeah, four, four horses, two deaths, and he put the um, stone over the river and then... 
every day he would come back to it and the stone would be just like overturned and no longer useful as a bridge. And he'd mm-hmm. drag it back into place. Hopefully no one died during that. And then every morning come back out of place again. And so he, was like, he just gave up and it took one horse to pull it up to the back to it into position and no one died. That's interesting because you'd think it would be harder to pull a stone uphill exactly. than downhill. Exactly. I, I, I'm no Carl Sagan. I'm no. no Bill Nye the science guy, but what? I'm not. I'm not even I'm, wearing. I'm a bow sorry. Tie. I'm sorry, folk. You you're witnessing the end of this podcast. I've been lied to. Oh, a couple of points from the chat. Um, Slug me up, Jeffrey is saying. Once we tried to go to the Roll Right Stones, but Dad didn't realise how far it was, so we all got back back out of the car, and that was that. Which is <laughs> quite a tale. Um, apparently, somebody tried to burn down. Uh, David Cameron's house in Dean, but unfortunately they got the wrong house, and that is the words of Throcuti. Throc, throc, I don't know how to pronounce that. Not my opinion that it's unfortunate that they got the wrong house. Um, maybe, yes. Yeah. <laughs> someone's asking, maybe the reason it took so long to pull down the hill is he was using one of the really small horses from the picture. <laughs> Oh yes, very just good the little points. pug, the little pug horses with a doll yeah. on them. Yeah, that means that it might have been two children dying. So that's actually quite sad now. Yeah. It's actually got quite sad now. Mm. It was just two normal people dying, two full size people. I wasn't bothered at all when the person died, but now I know it was a child. Yeah. I'm uh, mortified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Um, with, that's the thing with our podcast, though. You never know. It's gonna, it could be some light hearted. Whimsy could be some pun-based banter. It could be the mm. death of a child, the cruel mm. and untimely death of a child. That's. I think that's why people listen. <laughs> yeah. Just to see, um, is a kid going to die in this one? Throck Tukas um, has apologised for their impossible to say username, and rightly so. Yeah. David Cameron really? lives in Ronnie Barker's old house. I have. Does uh, he? I have a non-broadcastable opinion. Anyway, not going to say it. Mm. Um, yes. Uh, what what uh, bit of the legends did I get to? Okay, yeah, so the farm of the bridge and, okay, you notice I've been deliberately vague about how many stones there are yeah. in the King's Men. Yeah. That's because you can't count them. Well, what? you can count them. You can count them, but if you can't get the... Th- the same number three times I in mean, a row. Are you sure? Because I've got like I've got a picture of them there. I'm pretty certain I can. Are you saying that? No. What? Well, I'm going to try it. One, two, you... three. Well, there, there's there's uh, around seventy odd. There's around seventy. The 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 official number is seventy three. But the legend says that you can't count them three times. To- if you manage to count them three times in a row and get the same number, then you either get all your wishes come true mm. or something quite bad will happen. Like the witch will come back and get you. That's... The version I had was that the witch will come back and get you. But then nowadays they seem to be saying it's more the it's... any wish that you want. I mean, either very good luck or very bad luck is, is a bit of a broad. The range of outcomes there is a little too wide for me to yeah. bank yeah. on that. Yeah, but, you know, it's exciting. Uh, it's yo, a bit thrilling. like... A, it's, it's sort of like certainly the most fun you can have counting approximately seventy three stones. Yeah, three it's times. It's the most fun you can have in the Chipping Norton or the Chipping Norton area. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that is certainly what it says in the tourist brochure. It's the most There's fun you can no have. There's no Argos. In... <laughs> um, they. It's sort of like a. I I sort of think it's a bit like a sort of a medieval or, or prehistoric version of deal or no deal mm. wilson deluxe has said it's it's like roll right roulette which is very Ooh, much the same thing it's nice. like yeah you never know what you're gonna get except that the the barrel you have to spin is 73 large prehistoric stones so it probably takes longer yes. it oh, would have yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. slowed down the deer hunter quite a lot perhaps it was like an old roulette wheel mm, yeah that's maybe and, uh, what it was. Yeah, and a little sort of Shetland pony runs r- runs around where every stop <laughs> yeah. a yeah. child would die. Oh. Uh, well, that's because they, they're the ones that have to throw in the cannonball mm. or something. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yes. Uh, so those. Oh, uh, and once a baker tried, to, he wanted to f win deal or no deal. Um, and he baked a load of bread and he put a loaf on each stone so that he thought that, you know, he'd get all the way around and he'd see which one. Because the the thing is, you don't know which ones you've counted yeah. because some are sort of sticking out the ground. You can't quite tell if that's the same stone. And as we know from and, Hansel and Gretel, the only reasonable way to count something is using the medium of bread. Yeah, yeah. Bread is... It's, it's literally the only way you could have done it. Baked yeah, it's... Up to 80 loaves of bread. It's and, the past blockchain. <laughs> And uh, yeah, when he got back round, some of the br the bread had been magicked away, and he got in his car and rode off. Magicked away, a couple, couple of Shetland ponies chowing <laughs> down on a bap. Yeah, yes. fighting so over a baguette. The, those are the legends. Those are the stories of. Oh, and recently, someone um, they that I, I read in the Chippy News, the Chipping Norton News, wonderful publication. Oh yeah. That um, I say recently, this was genuinely probably about ten or fifteen years ago. Someone vandals had daubed paint on the stones, and no one knew why they'd done it. People were going, "Why had they done it?" And it's clearly they were trying to counter. Count, try, yeah, trying to counter. Yeah, yeah. So that's the um, that's that that is the legends. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that story, James. No worries. I th I'm sure I've left loads out. Well, I have. I have. I was going to say I've got a video, but it's a video you sent me. Oh yeah, I also. Would, would you yes, like to I, seamlessly tee that up without me having to prompt you? Yes, uh, I made a video. <laughs> I went there because I really enjoy going there, and I went there and I found that this vlogging lark is really difficult, especially if you're trying to look after a five-year-old and a one-year-old. <laughs> you may hear them at points. Okay, so this would be our, our first ever field report. I guess our first oh, ever yeah. men field report. Yes, yes. All right, let's see if it works. Claire, get your popcorn. I want to switch over to the video now. So this is the ring, the king's men, and the legend says that you can't count it three times in a row and get the same number three times, or something really good will happen, or something really bad will happen. Let's have a go. Okay, one go round. I got sixty-eight. How many did you get, Ted? 78. Okay. 131. What? So yeah, we're walking over to the Whispering Knights over there. From the King Circle over there. I'll be honest, I don't think they really needed to whisper. Maybe they're just going for a crafty. And they didn't want to share it. These are the Whispering Knights. They don't really look like knights, do they? They just look like stones. Yeah. But they got turned into stone. So maybe they tur got turned to look like stones rather than knights made out of stone. A lot easier to count. And then this hill rose up out of the ground. Those people weren't there. And he couldn't see Long Compton. And he didn't become king. And they all got turned to stone. And the witch, for some reason, turned into a tree. So yeah, that's Long Compton over there. <laughs> I'll give you biscuits in a minute, mate. Oh, biscuits. There's Long Compton over there. Thick we witches. Can't move for them. Absolutely full of them. So, but I can see Long Compton, so I'd... that make me king? Or am I going to randomly become a tree? Seamlessly not going back to the holding screen by mistake at the end of the video there. Ah. <laughs> I just realised I didn't even intentionally pun with field report. It was actually in a field. Oh, what? It was a literal field report. I it wish I had a field, field report with my kids in it, but I haven't got any children, so my life is empty. And... I live in South London, and there's nothing like that within walking distance. You could go into a like a, a park and feel sad. Yeah, yeah, I suppose I could, yeah. Just, I could just record in the background just the sounds of local kids just yelling stuff at me. <laughs> I could do that. Um, so, 
Are you ready to score me? Yes. Although, according to the itinerary that we did not plan oh. out for this this loose life thing, I was going to tell you some some stone stories. Oh if yeah, I, if talk that's to, all right. Talk to me. Yeah, because uh, I knew you stone were doing me. stones, so I thought um, I would try and get some from the very opposite end of the British Isles and find out a few mm. things about um, stones in Appin and Argyll. Are you up for that? A couple of little, yeah, uh, definitely. Little tiny little um, pebbles. Oh, p- pebbles, very, yeah. Small yeah. stones. Some gravel. Uh, well, the, there aren't many standing stones. in Ar- Argyll is where my mum is from, uh, up in Argyll. And the, there aren't many standing stones there, but what there are is loads of, um, I think they're called Glacial Erratics, which I really like because it sounds like a pretentious mm. album title, like Glacial mm. Erratic. Uh, but they're just the big, the big, you know when you're in a field and there's just a big round stone in the middle of nowhere and everything else is just hill and grass. And it, how did it get there? It's just been dropped by a glacier absolutely ages ago Um, and they're all over the place Um, and allegedly there is one uh, which which rings if you hit it and I spent a good portion of my childhood searching around trying to find that one and never did but what I do know exists you you have a question yeah where did who told you that this Uh, yeah my mum my mum told me that she had she'd heard it ringing so that's a that's a reliable source yeah I think it's like when I try and get mine to find something that I, yeah. I know where it is and it's not where they tend to look for things. <laughs> Just so I can have a little sit down. <laughs> uh, there was, uh, in the farm where my mum grew up, there was a big uh, a big erratic um, and it had a, 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 my granddad had painted a picture of a sheep onto it. Uh, he, he liked to, to paint and he'd paint dogs and sheep on stones and rocks. Uh, it's sort of a life-size portrait of a sheep. And what I like about that is there's a little bit of the the Scottish sense of humour in because the field the field that it was in was full of sheep and just drawing <laughs> like you couldn't there's plenty of sheep around but one of them was a drawing of a sheep and I, <laughs> I I don't know if it's ever happened but I visualise him accosting English tourists as they walk through just going like uh, oh you see that you see that sheep no you don't <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that's there's a sheep over there, yeah, like a wily coyote, a very low key wily coyote going like, "Oh yeah, you reckon? Okay, <laughs> okay." There's a sheep over there. No, it's not. <laughs> go touch it. Go, go, go get a straw. Oh, oh, he's flat. You can't see him from that side, but here he is. How, what's going on? It's like, like, he, he was um, he was from every region of Scotland. If you if you're wondering, he was uh, and from and the Highlands so and Glasgow and Edinburgh at the same time. That explains the accent. Um. It's like that story you hear about a thing that happened on a lad's holiday where one of those, you know, you get those spherical bollards. Yeah. Sometimes in like beach, on sort of beach places and somewhere, and they're made out of cement, but someone's painted it to look like a football and then a drunken oh. lad wanders up oh. and breaks his foot. Oh, I, I was imagining a bigger one and thinking it was a space hopper. So I just don't know which would be worse. <laughs> oh, that's a lot more fun. I... <laughs> Trying to awful. hop on a, spa- a cement space hopper. <laughs> <laughs> but just kicking like a medicine ball that would be awful well just just a rock that's cemented to the ground but then i guess i don't know what the same thing would be you would just be playing tricks on a shepherd who just or a sheepdog yeah that would be come on come in come by come by the, the, those kind of stones they appear in the the only novel that uh, is, is associated with the area which is robert louis stevenson's kidnapped there's a scene in kidnapped where the the, the two heroes are hiding from from the cops you, 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 you uh, raising a point there? I don't think you pronounced the exclamation. Sorry, yeah, it's got an exclamation mark. It's kidnapped. It's a bit more, a bit more Broadway. Is that all right with you? Mm-hmm. A bit more. That's extent? better, thank you. Uh, so in Robert Louis Stevenson's kidnapped, um, there's a bit where they're being chased by the the fuzz, as as they were known at the time, and um, they they have to hide on top of a big 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 rock, which has a hollow in the middle of it. So they they hide in the big rock while all the uh, the soldiers search around and they stay there for I think a whole day and it just, they nearly die because of the blazing sun making it the least realistic episode in that fairly accurate mm. historical novel <laughs> but the last thing I found about stones in that area is um, very small white pebbles have been found uh, on graves uh, so it was c- customary to put white pebbles on graves and even in very ancient graves they found pieces of uh, quartz covering the top of the grave and 
the white stones are believed to be associated with death. So when uh, fishermen were, were getting ballast, big sacks of ballast for their ships, they would they would separate out all of the white stones. They would never take a white stone with them. Uh, and there's that one occasion. Sounds laborious. I know. It's, yeah, it's like the the M and M's for a, a band, whichever band yes. that was, <laughs> with the M and M rule. Um, Ozzy Osbourne wouldn't go on stage. Yeah. Unless he had a brandy glass full of brown M and M's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the I guess the fishermen were just like uh, pretentious rockers, insisting <laughs> on not having. Didn't white one stone. of those fishermen bite a bat's head off? <laughs> That was good luck, though, in, in that, at that time. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, uh, fe- in the Fable saw, Coast, Westwood and Kingsill. Oh, so just just on the, the subject of the white stones, I did notice in the chat earlier, someone asked if I was going to be telling my white poo story uh, this episode. <laughs> Seems like you were tearing me up for it. But no, carry on, in the book. Um, oh, no, in, in the... In the book, The Fabled Coast, uh, which I've referred to before, uh, Kings Hill and Westwood's book, uh, they tell the story of a, uh, a minister's son who had a, li- had a lift on a fishing boat and they didn't catch any fish during the whole journey. And they referred to him as the Clark Vein, the Clark Vein or the White Stone. That became his oh. nickname. Mm. That's nice. So those are just a few, just a, 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 a just a little pebble dash there of Scottish yeah. stones. Yeah. Just you f- flowing a f- bit of gravel at your window there. Yeah. That's oh, good. Uh, oh, it would make a lot of noise on the shed if you had. Yeah. I'm surprised the cat hasn't walked over the roof as well. That's also terrifying. As we don't have a cat. Oh, spooky no, goat we cat. Do, we do have a cat. We All do right. have a cat. He's he's a great cat. Coop. Cooper, yes. Cooper, I know, I know your cat's name. Spelt with a K. Spelt with a K. Oh, I always so so he's as in Mario Brothers rather than Twin Peaks. Yes, yes. I always thought Twin Peaks. I always saw him drinking a cup of coffee instead of kidnapping a princess. No, he's yeah, he he's he's a princess kidnapper. But I do sort of speak to him as though he was the Coop from uh, Twin Peaks. Yeah, mm. hey Coop. Kind of thing because you would you would speak yeah. to a Cooper troop. Well, that puts you in a sort of Gordon Cole oh, yeah. kind of. Um, would you like? Yes. Would you like some cat food there? I'll make. <laughs> don't worry, I'll get it. Kind of <laughs> roll. Yes, exactly that. Yeah. That's um, one of my useless so you... celebrity impressions is, is David Lynch from Twin Peaks. That's a good celebrity. It's, it's, I'm surprised that I got to do my Ralph Brown one. To be <laughs> honest. <laughs> and Gennery Scotsman. Yep. Uh, I like that. He needs a tiny mug of coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a little. But he ain't got th- his thumbs up here, so it'd have to be a really weird handle. Yeah. Really long, ha- or just a really flat, long handle. Anyway, mm. shall we scores? Yes, let's do some scores. What categories have you got for me? Okay, James? let's get let's get it out of the way. Naming. I like roll right. Yeah, but do they like... roll right? Because if anything, the story told us that, that it, moving them was quite difficult. They and... rolled wrong because they wouldn't roll down a hill. But yeah, so it's a cool name, but quite misleading in some ways. It is. I, I always f- feel that the town of Little Roll Right sounds like a passive-aggressive waiter fat shaming you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, little Roll Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so that's um, that's not appropriate these days. No. Nope. Um, nope. The kings, the king's men. Everything sounds like a pub where you're from. I, I, <laughs> the whispering knights. Yes. Uh, which which That's sounds a like a Mills and, a Boone, Mills and Boone novel. Um, <laughs> the whispering knights. The, the king's. Stone. They whispered of love and betrayal. <laughs> uh, the king, the king's stone, a witch who turned into a tree, who remains nameless. Yeah. Mm. Oh no! Some people think it's Mo- a Mother Shipton. Oh yeah. Because there's a Shipton under Witchwood nearby. Do you, you said it's a Not Mother Shipton? An a it's like a what? One of the a member of the Mother Shipton one, franchise. Yeah, one of the mothers Shipton. Um, <laughs> one of the Sh- Ma ships. Yeah, uh, the Shizzle. famous one is from Leeds. There's a famous witch called Mother Shipton from Leeds, and there was a similarly named one who was actually from Shipton. And I think she also predicted the world would... They both predicted the world would end in 1881. 
Oh, idiots. And there was there was a great big Fools. storm that year, and a lot of people died, so it might oh. have been a bit scary. Uh, yeah, Stapokadur is pointing out that the Shiptons are like James Bond, and, uh, you know, they just get replaced. Uh, right. Uh, they're and, all played by men. Yeah, they're all play. They're all uh, men. Yeah. Um, so there's names. There's the uh, as as Lachned has said, the ASMR knights. They're quite cool. That uh, I like them. <laughs> that is a, that is a better name than uh, the Whispering Knights. <laughs> um, we could we could do that. I, I could mm. set you up to the to the right here, and I could go up to the left here, and we could we could put some people to sleep. That is a compliment mm. we regularly get for this podcast. <laughs> oh, I listen to it before I go to sleep. Do you? <laughs> We we'll just have to start editing in sudden loud noises. Yeah. Teach those people a lesson. Pay attention to our podcast. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a two. I think it's a two out of five. Yeah. It's not. It's, yeah. it, it's not. It's not your best. I very much enjoyed the story, but in name terms, it, there's nothing. There is nothing. Yeah. Even the one name that I found was the same name as a more famous person. Yeah. Okay then. So second up. Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Supernatural. Well, I didn't appreciate the mm-hmm noise that you made. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't like you trying to influence the scores. This is uh, not appropriate. <laughs> what have we got? Transmogrification. Metamorphosis. Um, mm. What's the word for turning into stone? Ossification. These sure. are all great words. Um, yeah. A- and fairly supernatural, I think. Turning into turning mm-hmm. to stone. Is is a classic. I don't. I don't think we've had many stories where people turn to stone. And in this case, no. up to seventy nine stones. Yeah, people have turned I think to stone. Four of them. One of them. Seventy eight. I think would be the total number of stones. Circa seventy eight. Yes. Stone turnings. That's that's. Mm. I mean, that knocks Medusa into a cocked hat. That's fantastic. Big that's time. That's very supernatural. You got a witch. I didn't even remember the terraforming. No, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Hill be- out I, of nowhere. I, 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 I beg your pardon. Snarky Bartfast, living up to the snark in the name, has pointed out that ossification is turning to bone and is suggesting that petrification oh. is the word I wanted. Isn't uh, it turning into Ozzy Osbourne? <laughs> Ossification. <laughs> yeah. Like them sailors. <laughs> Uh, I, th- I yeah, that is correct. Ossification is turning to bone, and uh, mm. uh, this has been etymology corner. Thank you, Snarky oh. Bartfast. Excellent. Um, and yeah, the Midnight well, uh, Library we've... for also pointing that out. I know. See, every everyone's coming at me. Everyone's coming oh. for me in the comments. You say a word wrong. This is why we do the podcast because I say loads of words wrong and then edit them out so that I don't and make I'm... any mistakes, and then I add I in mistakes for you. Yeah. Yeah, you, t- you do an impression of you just saying things wrong. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, do that. Do that. And all them ums you put in. Um, there's, <laughs> the, there's, uh, there's, there's the fairies that dance around a kingstone. You've got the oh, stones fairies. just dancing in the air. Yeah, they rise up into the air and dance, coming to life, inconveniencing a bridge builder. Yes. The, yeah, the uh, earth. The earth works itself, just just leaping up in order to make mm. in like a big prank, essentially. Because, a witch that turns into a tree for no real reason. Yeah, turning into a tree. Imagine ending your, a, a zinger with, "And I'll turn into a tree," and then turning into a tree. <laughs> what a mic drop! For, forever, because the tree as well. There aren't any elder trees there anymore. I think the last they they did sort of keep cropping up and stuff, but it, I think the last elder tree died in about the eighties. So it's the last elder tree in the anymore. in the region, not the last elder tree. Yeah, in the, in the area. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought we were in a but dead children all... situation where we had to be quite sad about an extinct tree, but no, it's no. just in the area. But the um, the uh, the king's men and the king may come back to life. Will come back to life and take over the country oh. sometime. Yeah. Don't know when. Right. I mean, bearing in mind that the people who said this thought the world was going to end a hundred years ago. Yeah. That, it, there's really a lot of vagueness around that happening. Yeah, yeah. Still, it's five out of five. I, I'm, yes. It's nothing I, can, I can't argue. It's unarguably it is very a, supernatural. It is an extremely supernatural story. 
Uh, Arthurians, to Pokedor points out. It is. They, 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 they will come back to life in, in the hour of uh, England's greatest need, just like King Arthur. Oh, I, that you put that in. It, that does... They just will come back to life and take over the country. Oh, point. right. So not when it when it's least convenient. I mean, it's hard no to problem. see how, how much worse things could get. How much less competent yeah. could they? They might come back and be like, nah, actually. Uh, we'll give it a bit. Give a it a bit. minute. Yeah. Come back later. I suppose they come back every midnight just to check whether things have improved to the point that they can whether it's worth countenance it. yeah. a takeover. Well, that's perhaps feeding into my next um, category, which is passive aggression. Passive aggression. Break that down for me. So there's quite a lot of passive aggression in there in this story. Uh, you've got if if this idea that they will come back to life at some point, but they do come back to life every night and go, yeah, not for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit judgy. It's a snub, certainly. You've got the the witches, the weird sort of turning herself into a, a tree out of spite seems yes. to be quite it's, passively it's aggressive. Cutting off your nose to spite your face, turning mm -hmm. yourself into a tree to spite the king and his men. And I bet, I, although it isn't featured in the rhyme, I bet when the when the hill rose up out the ground, she'd be like, oh, didn't you see the hill there? <laughs> I thought I, you should probably have taken that into account before you uh, agreed to my deal. And the Whispering Knights... The most passive aggressive yep. of all the megaliths. Well, I think. Um, I, well, I guess you know it's. Um, I suppose it's it, it's four points, James. If that if that makes you happy for yeah, it's one per. <laughs> if, if, I mean, if you if you feel like that's okay, then I guess I'm going to give you four points for passive aggression. If that yeah, if that's I'll the way you want that. this, to, I'm no, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. If that's the way you want it to be. Fine. It's four points. Fine. Good. This uh, is. I'm really pleased. It, that is one per whispering night, and yep. what could be more passive aggressive than a stone that kills two people? <laughs> <laughs> That's the other album. Passive aggressive. <laughs> Glacial uh, erratic. Oh yeah, they're double albums as well from the days of CDs. Oh, I loved. I loved that. Same price, two CDs. Not bothered about how many songs. It's it's like oh fourteen tracks per CD. I don't the quality of it. I'm not interested. It can all be B sides. I don't care. But look at that. It's got a little booklet in the middle. Mm. I know. I was all about the value for money, which is why I bought Wu Tang Forever rather than Thirty Six Chambers. Mm. Thirty Six Chambers is the better album. And Wu Tang Forever. If I remember too many correctly, skits. Wu Tang Forever lasts until the end of time. And well, it is. Yes, it's it's, it's I was, an infinite album. I did feel ripped off when I when I watched the end credits of the never ending story. <laughs> so my final category is unknowability. I don't think that's a word. Unknowability. Mm. Okay, so what what's what is unknown in this story? How many stones are there? Oh yeah, Unknown. yeah, yeah. Um seventy three, uh, I think. Like, well, just get me some bread. I'll count them. It's easy. <laughs> also, that's a lot of loaves. It, and bakers can't be trusted Even because bakers baker. think a dozen, a dozen is 13. He's the last person who should have been counting is a baker. It, you want to get someone in a job where numbers mean something. Like an accountant. Yes. Yes. Yeah, get a, uh, get a bean counter out there with his beans, one bean on top of... Do you know, count them using thing, something yeah. that's not edible. That's what I. That's my <laughs> advice to the people. Something that isn't edible and won't roll off. <laughs> Anything yeah. but rolls and beans. That's unknowable. The purpose of the stones built in... Uh, in the perp, yeah. In pre, prehistoric times. That is, that mm. is genuinely pretty mysterious. Just one of them is older than time. Is literally nights. literally older than time, according to the the Holy Bible. Um, the the yeah. um, uh, what were they whispering about? Yeah, we, I we'll guess we will, ne we will. We will. We will never, never know. know. We, I don't even know how we know that they were whispering. So that is that is pretty mm. unknowable. What's so special about looking at Long Compton? Yeah, it is nice. It is nice. It's a lovely view. 
Oh, I mean, I saw it in the saw it in the picture. I'm still not mm. king of England, though, am I? No. Am not I? Yeah. Not yet. You're a king in England. I'm a yeah. I'm a b king <laughs> in England. That is true. Uh, all right. In the category of unknowability, mm. um, I'm just going to get my my notes here. What was the witch's problem? As well. I don't we'll know. Never yeah. know. Why oh. was she? What was she? What was her horse in that race? Very small. Oh, sorry, that, that small dog. Yeah. <laughs> more, more of a greyhounds for her, I think. Uh, I'm going to write your score on this piece of paper, and um, I'm never going to show you it, James. The score <sighs> for unknowability will remain a secret forever. Uh, and will be entered. What does it say? You'll never know. The good thing about holding things like this is you immediately look like a magician. All you have to do yes. is hold things with the tip of your fingers. Like, I'm not going to do anything here. But it's very impressive. Can I make it vanish? Camera trickery. No, it's hold on. It's camera trickery. Going to have to fold it smaller. Oh. Oh. No, bad, bad, bad close-up magic on the live show. That's me trying to back palm the piece of paper. Oh my! Th I mean, you can do it with a card. This, this looks that's like a back palm. This, so, yeah. You know how Zoom used to be used because we we're talking over Zoom at the moment. So yes. Zoom used to be used for like business purposes. So from my <laughs> point of view, this is. I mean, it's the worst job interview ever anyway, because <laughs> I'm conducting it from a shed and you're doing close-up magic <laughs> as part of it. Very, very bad close-up magic. Give me give me a, a train ticket and I can I can make that baby vanish and come back, but it does Ooh. not work so well with a folded-up piece of paper. That probably won't make it into the edited-down version of the, of the podcast. <laughs> we might take the failed magic trick out. <laughs> Oh, and I've just realised that piece of paper also had the itinerary on it, so I don't know where we are in the show. Scores. Oh, oh we did them. I'm there you go. We did the scores. My computer is, which has my itinerary on it, is close, is well, close to uh, ossification. Um, one thing that I've been wanting to say is um, a few episodes ago, we started doing um, a little shout-out saying that you can give us some money on coffee.com mm. or co-fee.com. Yes. And some people, some mad people, have, have done that and sent us some money, yeah. which is really Very nice. Very kind. So I, I wanted think... to say thank you to those people and, and anybody in the chat who is one of those people. Thank you. I, we set it up really not knowing if anybody was going to support. And it's yeah, that's so incredibly nice that kind. people have. Thank and you very much. I was going to say it helps that, like, a few episodes ago you broke your microphone which if you were listening to season three is why james sounded weird for about three episodes mm. before we noticed yeah. it in the middle of the series um yeah. and so it really it makes things like replacing that microphone much easier yes and i i'm very grateful and thankful to the people i think perhaps they either they don't know how much coffee costs or their barista is ripping them off because they're <laughs> very kind. Yes, some people are very much Thank central you. London pricing on the amount of they're spending <laughs> on coffee, which is appreciated. Yeah, exactly. I live in a shed <laughs> with a zombie <laughs> two metres that way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, obviously none of the none of the donation money will go towards shed or shed upkeep. That is completely on. Or James. zombies. Or zombies. <laughs> I'm sorry. I draw the line. That's where I draw the line. You will not fund zombies, not and you won't fund people who support zombies. No, no. Good for you. <laughs> oh, a few people are saying that they would do a regular Patreon. We're not on Patreon. But uh, oh. we, we we do have the, the if you have if you would like to give us some money you don't have to we do have the link mm. beneath the chat it says buy a coffee for the Lawmen podcast if you mm. if you can't see that it's co k o dash f i dot com forward slash l o r e m e n Lorayman pod it doesn't have the word pod in it uh, it just says Lawmen no it's just Lawmen is it just Lawmen yes. don't give Lawmen pod it no. Lorman uh, Pod is us probably on Twitter. Sort that out. Yeah, we should. Yes. We should. We should make those the same, but they mm. aren't. Oops. So, um, I would, well, I think we better. Go, I better go because I can hear some scratching. <laughs> would, and I'm getting afraid. Would Would you like to me to play in uh, the the teaser that you have sent Ooh, me? Oh yes. 
Yes, I, I, in my excitement, I'd forgotten that we have a little bit of extra content because this is obviously going to be released as the next podcast download. But we wanted to give you something a little bit extra so that you don't just listen to this again with all the magic literally cut out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without the bit where I failed to do a magic trick. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah, uh, we have an expose almost of the snuffling beast of lidston Ooh, expose I've, is really I've setting s- up an awful lot it's not yeah it's gonna it's gonna be i interviewed the harding brothers who i believe are in the chat hello and also the driver of the car ian who i think is in the chat as well hello as well about the snuffling beast of lidston Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to play that interview now, and we are just going to have to sit here and be quiet well, just while that little, happens. This is just a tease. This is oh, just it's just a, oh, it's just a tease. Whistle. It's just yeah. a, a sousson, an appetizer. Where oh, here, here comes that little breadstick. No, it was too quiet. I'm going to start again, but at a reasonable volume. One, two, three. Looks really fun on video because it's so out of sync, but actually we all did that at the same time somehow. Oh, really? I've been doing this for 16 weeks and I have not worked it out. <laughs> I, I felt I was late to clap. I think you were actually a little you, bit you late You couldn't really well. see much, but you could just feel sense, movement, a kind of mm. uh, you know, mm. like a change in the... Uh, atmosphere yeah the atmosphere what was happening and snuffler what how do you mean snuffler can you demonstrate that (laughs) i remember dan shrieking what noise did you hear jim a gargled feminine shriek can you (laughs) oh that's not so bad one two I haven't heard that before. Uh, I enjoyed the gargled <laughs> feminine shriek. <laughs> I enjoyed that, that very was, much. That was Dad. Well, that was Jim Im- imitating. Im- oh, yes, yes, I understand. Mm. Yes, so that will the full length version of that with a little bit of extra input from another witness and a expert on ABCs, Alien mm. Big Cats. A- ABCs are Alien Big Cats, right. Yes. So when people say learn the ABCs, Alien mm. Big Cats is what they're talking Learn about. Learn about Alien Big Cats. Right, Beast okay. Of Bob, Beast of Bodmin, oh, uh, yeah. Beast of Burford, and um, probably just watch Ty- Tiger King. Yep. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you to everyone in the chat for being there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, movies have been brought up again, and I don't, I don't know... I shouldn't have to say that that's not appropriate. Several people are complaining oh. about movie warnings, but in a way, complaining about the lack of movie warnings... Is itself an invitation to the movies. So yeah, <sighs> let's, let's knock it on the head. Let's let's be yeah. sensible because these are yeah. hard times. Yeah, stay safe, stay alert. Don't mention the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Slap Take it. The NHS. Prote- yeah, um, let's clap. Clap for the movies. Clap. <laughs> clap Water for the off. snuffling beast of Lidston. Shall I, shall I play the outro music, James? Yes. While, while do we're it. here. All right, let's go. Yeah. You've been listening to and watching via live stream Lawmen with me, Alistair Beckett King. And me, James Shakeshaft. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, um, th- that was good and we appreciate it. Uh, thank you, especially to the people in the chat. Thank you to Shanghai Burton who has put an emoji of a referee. Nice one. Music goes on for a while. It's about a minute long. So oh. normally we don't have the music playing live. We add that in in post production. Yeah, we don't just sort of hang around. Yeah, like it's this. kind of awkward to just sit here while it plays. Anyway, pimp pimp out of pimp says Ushiono. Thank you. Oh, lovely. That is that is praise indeed. Cheerio, TK two thousand. <laughs> Goodbye. By the way, dog. And that's the end of the music. Thank you so much for watching the stream. We're going to go away now. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.